Nano Banana is now in Photoshop and it is a hundred times better than generative fill. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I made all these edits, how it works, what you can do, the power of it, as well as how to install it and get it. And just know it's going to cost you about 20 bucks. So let's get started. How this works is once you install the plugin, and I'll talk about that in just a moment, you want to go and start selecting things in your scene. You can select things either with the lasso tool or you can use quick mask using Q on your keyboard. I'm going to do it the old fashioned way because that's what I'm used to. Once you do that, you're going to want to run the script. So I have it saved to a key bind so it pops up. Otherwise, I've got to go over to File, Scripts, Nano Banana. Takes more time. So I'm going to run that. And now I can actually just prompt all my Nano Banana stuff directly in Photoshop, which is really nice because this gives me the control in the user interface that I'm familiar with. So here I can say, change marble to be white Calcutta and I'm going to hit generate and we'll talk about what all those other buttons do in a couple seconds. And I don't want to fast forward to this one yet because I want you to see how long this takes it actually takes less than like 15 seconds right here. You're going to see a little command prompt thing pop up. Don't worry. This is all part of the process. Once it's done, that'll go away and then it'll download the result. And as you can see, there we go. So you can see in no time at all, it dropped that in there and it preserved the statue here and the candles and everything. And it did a phenomenal job. Like you can't even tell that this was like edited and to do this manually, as many of you know, would be extremely difficult. So this is kind of the workflow and it's really, really incredible. Like this sofa, I could do the same thing, but let's say I want to do a specific color. Let's just say for the sake of this, I'm going to go and select, let's say like a bright red, right? What's nice about this plugin is I can actually use a foreground color. So you see this? So I can say change sofa color. And what it's gonna do is look at the sofa color or the reference color that I have because of my foreground color. That's what this guy is. So watch this, I'm gonna hit generate and I said just change sofa color, I didn't say red. I'm gonna hit generate and what you're gonna see is it's gonna start thinking, it's gonna take you know 10 seconds and then it's gonna pull that and apply it to the sofa. And there we go. I didn't need to use any crazy layer stuff or like masks it just knows exactly what the sofa is and it applied it and it did like a phenomenal job like the shadows look correct and everything and this is where it starts to get really crazy so now now that i've got the sofa here let's say i want a bunch of people sitting here right so i can run the plugin one more time i can say couple sitting and i'm gonna hit generate like that it added some people and they may look a little weird. Uh, you can actually upscale them or you could go for a higher res version um, just to point that out. If you click upscale result, it does take more time. It makes them look a little bit sharper, but generally speaking, these people do look pretty good. And I said earlier on, this is a hundred times better than generative fill because look at what generative fill does. This is embarrassing on like the Adobe front because they've got like billions and billions of dollars and it looks like garbage. So get ready. I mean like, Come on, let me, let, me, let me put this up. Like the scale is like, come on. The scale is completely out of whack. This looks horrible. The people look miserable. It's just, it's just embarrassing. So look at that. It even adds some decor, like mugs for each person. Like pff, that's, that's just crazy. So don't use Photoshop generative fill. It sucks, but you already know that. So the other thing that I thought was really cool is you can also use reference images. That's what makes this really, really powerful. So this rug, I always thought was kind of low quality. And let's say I want my own rug. Let's say I go shopping and I want to swap this out. I can run the command again. And now it's going to ask for a reference photo. So I can hit browse, navigate to my reference photo. And I'm just going to say replace rug with reference photo. Not doing anything crazy here. I'm just using natural English, right? You could be more specific, but I've been running these simple prompts and so just to like benchmark it, test it to see how good it is. And it's doing a great job. Don't overcomplicate things. If it works, just do that. And there you go. That's the rug. So the cool thing here is it did an amazing job with just like preserving the shadows and everything. And like I said this before, but it's really difficult to do this manually and if you're curious what it actually looks like full size it's this so like let's just pay attention to this corner it's got like those blue lines right like look at that it's got that there so one thing i will point out is you see right here it didn't like fill this in i don't know if this is due to the plugin or a limitation 
Um, but I noticed based on the selection window size, sometimes it doesn't do things all the way. That makes sense. So I'll use this ceiling for example. Pay attention to my selection box. It's like long and slender. I've been trying to do a couple tests here. If you know what's going on, let me know. But watch this. Change ceiling to white. I'm going to do this two times just so you can see. So this is the slender version. And what I've noticed is it just can't handle that much data if it's narrow. If I do like a square or a rectangle, it does a better job. So I think you need to be like smart about your selection methods. Here we go. So you see how it only did this area, but now watch this. If I were to do selection of the whole window, right? And then I were to go to run the plugin again, change ceiling to white and we generate that. It'll do a better job. It won't fill all of it, but it'll fill most of it. So not sure what's going on there, but still, even if I have to fill in the blanks, it's still going to save me much more time. So like the fact that this process, you know, cost me 20 bucks all in has saved me hours of Photoshop work. So I don't know. I feel like it kind of pays for itself. So you see right here at the edges, it didn't do it. I don't know. I don't know if it's like an edge thing, if it's like a resolution thing, but just pay attention. Like if you're running to that issue, go with a bigger selection box. Okay. Um, it can handle the large swaths, you know, like we, we did it here, but just pay attention to that. And it is like pretty intelligent. Like I want to change the wall color here, but notice how I've got like the floor and the sofa selected. If I were to run it one more time and say change wall to white oak, it's going to go ahead and just target that. So don't feel like you need to be really, really specific with your selection window. You can actually just have it figure it out itself, which is kind of nice. And I feel like this is like the benefit of using AI tools where it actually speeds up your workflow or it speeds up your workflow where it's not trying to like take our jobs away. It's just making things easier for us. And look at that. It does it beautifully, just like a before and after. And if you didn't realize, like it does give you a mask with the prompt so you can see easily what's going on. Like, that is huge. So love that. I have noticed some weird issues where sometimes it like sprays a little bit much, but again, you've got a mask here. You literally just go in there and you can paint that out. That's not a big deal um, at all, given like what we have here. So you can target large swaths or even small areas like this. I can select this, run the plugin one more time and say change to metal sculpture and then generate that as well. So all in all, I've been loving this. I think it's it's much easier and more intuitive to use rather than the, the Google AI Studio because like we all know Photoshop that we've been in it our whole lives. So to just be able to like work on it, our renderings or images directly here, I'm a big fan of that. Look at that. And it just changed the color, the material properties. It's nuts. So just know you can change things via your prompt or reference color or reference photo. Okay. So if this is interesting to you, I'll show you how to install it and the process there and like why it costs money. So first things first is you want to go over to this link. Um, again, this is by Rob De Winter. He came up with this amazing job. This is Gumroad for nine bucks. You get to download the script. Okay. So once you download that and pay for it, of course, you're going to get this page saying like, Hey, this is the, uh, the script. You've got to install this and they give you, you know, a good, a good enough guide about how to get started. So let's download that. Let's pay for it. Nine bucks, whatever. Um, once you do that, you need, you need to run a, a cloud service called replicate. And this is basically going to handle all the AI processing in the cloud. So this is where the extra money comes in. So all you're going to do is hit sign in. It's going to ask you to sign in with GitHub. Go ahead and do that. It's going to ask you to kind of like fund the account so you can generate a API key to plug into Photoshop. So all you have to do, you're just going to click your name, account settings. We're going to go over to billing, add credit. So I've already added 10 bucks. So add however much money you want, but hit add credit, drop that in there. And then once you do that, you're going to go to API token, type in a name. I'm calling this banana tutorial and I'm going to copy this. And so do that. And what it's going to do is every time you hit, you know, prompt or okay, whatever it says in the, uh, in Photoshop plugin, it's going to pull from here and it's going to start billing you. So what you'll see here is like, these are all the times I prompted, right? And it cost me like seven, seven seconds of 
processing time and I've spent like a buck 50 to make this tutorial. So like, and I've been doing this like all day, like, you know, it goes, goes on and on. I don't know where the other pa pages are, but trust me, I've been doing this for a long time. So it, it doesn't cost much. It's my point. Um, yeah. So once you do that, what you're going to have to do is actually get that plugin, this guy into Photoshop. So to do that, you're going to go to this folder path. So this is C program files, Adobe, Photoshop presets, scripts, and you're going to drop it in right here. So as you can see, that's a script and make sure Photoshop is, is closed at this point. Once you do this, then you can open it. Okay. Once you open it, once you open it, you're going to be able to see it right here under scripts, Nana banana. And then it's going to ask you for that API token key. Just drop that in there. And that's basically going to connect your paid funded account with your Photoshop. And then you're good to go. That's it. And then if you ever run into issues with like payment and everything, you know, just, just fill it with them um, with more money. But what I recommend at that point, once you've got it like working and it's installed, go over to edit keyboard shortcuts and find under file, the plugin, let's scroll down somewhere here, scripts, click this and then type in the shortcut here. So I did shift control one. It was just unused and easy for me to remember. And now every time I hit shift control one, it comes up instead of me going to file scripts and so on. You want it to be super quick and simple, but as you can see there, it doesn't take much time to set this up. Um, really useful. I mean, just like five minutes setup versus like hours of time saved. Why not? So anyways, just to recap, this is going to give you Nano Banana in Photoshop, native to the Photoshop user interface. All you have to do is select. You can use the magic wand. You can use rectangles. You can use quick mask. It doesn't matter. You just need a selection. Then you can run it. You can prompt via image, prompt, or color. And you can even upscale if you think people look a little bit too soft, which is totally fine. And it takes 10 seconds per edit. So go ahead and try this out. I'm curious what you think about it, but I feel like this really fixes a lot of the issues that I've been saying in the previous videos of mine around this topic that like AI is kind of hard to control, but now that I'm using Photoshop, it makes it easier to control. And it actually feels like a tool that's going to like better my work instead of a tool that's trying to take my job away, which I appreciate. So again, big shout out to Rob for like setting up this plugin. Don't know how he did it, but it's great. It's awesome. Happy to support them. Anyways, if you have any questions about this, drop it in the comments. Happy to help. And as always, think about liking and subscribing to the video. It really helps me out. And I'll see you in the next video.